everybody. Uh, first, I would like to welcome each of you here tonight to the Granville School Board Candidates Forum. The numbers here tonight may be small, but I can assure you the issues and responsibilities of a school board member are not. In fact, with more than 229 employees, the Granville School System is one of the top employers in town, if not the largest. Add that to a budget of in excess of $28 million, and you can plainly see this is a big business. But it's much more than that. It is really about the education, the nurturing, and the success of nearly 1,100 students. Young men and women who are working today to be tomorrow's citizens, our bankers, doctors, soldiers, and so on. Their success depends upon two things. First, a strong, stable family environment that supports and encourages them to study, work hard, and value education. Second, an excellent school system that offers them the tools to get a world-class education so that they can succeed in an ever-changing and competitive world. Tonight we have five candidates who are seeking to serve on the Granville School Board of Education. In order to help those 1,100 students achieve those goals, Granville is fortunate that we have a full slate of candidates, five in fact, running for three open seats. The top three vote-getters will earn three-year terms. As opposed to past forums, tonight is different in that the candidates have not been given the questions ahead of time. We are doing this because we wanted to make them different from the questions posed in the Sentinel in our Meet the Candidates uh, section, which will be published next week. Finally, tonight's uh, event is a forum, it's not a debate. Rather, it's your opportunity to get to know each candidate, learn why they want to become a member of the school board, and see whether they will garner your support. I also want to mention is that the questions will be five to six questions and there will be a two minute limit on each answer, okay? Uh, Camille has generously offered to videotape the uh, event tonight and uh, hopefully by tomorrow we'll have that up online to on the Sentinel website, on our Facebook page, and probably the school's website. And we're going to put in the paper to aggressively get it out so people can see it. So again, well, there's not a lot of people here tonight. Potentially tomorrow, hundreds and hundreds of people will be able to see this. So I think it's important, and I thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll start off with our first question, and we'll start with Eric, and we'll go down from there. Uh, can you give us a brief description of your background? Um, you want to use the... Uh, okay. yeah. I'm on? Okay. Yeah. Um, I grew up here. I graduated from Granville Central School in 1982. I went on to graduate from UVM in 1986. I have presently raised three children in, in the school. They've all graduated. One has graduated from college. The other two are in college. Um, I have worked at Telescope for 28 years, and I've been a member of the school board for nine. And before that, I've been very active in the youth football, Little League, and other youth sports like basketball. Hi, I'm Nakia Torres. Um, I've lived in Granville my whole life. I wasn't raised or born here, but I was raised here. I graduated from Granville High School in 1996 and pursued my Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology. Um, before I went to college, though, I just wanted to say I was involved in many clubs. Um, gosh, Spanish Club, Leo Club, you know, the list can go on, vice president, um, treasurer at one point, and also played field hockey, basketball, and track 9 through 12. Um, I really support athletics and all of our extracurriculars. I know I was really involved when I was here, and I can honestly say I had an excellent high school uh, career here. So after college, um, my husband and I got married and moved back to Granville to raise our three boys. We currently have two that are enrolled in school here, one at GES, one at MJT, and a three-year-old who will soon be joining MJT. Um, I currently work for the Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. I'm a supervising offender rehabilitation coordinator, and what that means is I supervise 13 prisons in New York State, and I supervise their alcohol and substance abuse programs. I go all over the state, I visit them, and I create their policies and write their manuals and make sure they're running programs the way uh, the state wants them to, I guess. Um, I'm also uh, up for re-election. I was in a one-year term this year. I have already completed a three-year term, so I'm completing my fourth. I would love to be re-elected. Um, I think I have a lot to offer the district, and it's been a learning curve. 
It's very difficult, I think, when you don't work in a school system to come on board and learn everything uh, that there is to know about the education field. I think the acronyms in and of itself took me one full year to learn. Um, so I really do uh, appreciate everything that everybody does that works in an education system. Um, I'm also the president of our Athletic Booster Club here. Uh, it's a very newly formed club and we're getting its uh, feet off the ground and uh, it's a work in progress. So I have to put in a little plug about the club, but thank you very much. I'm Ed Palatica. I was born and raised in Granville. I graduated in 1986. I went on to University of Albany, got my Bachelor of Arts degree in 1990. Came back home and went to work with my partners to build a business over in Pultley. We now have operations in Pultley. We have them in Wells and in Granville. Uh, I have two boys in the school, one in third grade and one in tenth. Um, we're very active in the community. We're Little League coaches, basketball coaches, uh, we're involved in the scouting programs, and I'm running again. <laughs> so. Thank you. Audrey. Hello, I'm Audrey Hicks. Um, I did not grow up in Granville, but I did attend a public high school from which I did also graduate. Um, I went on to Smith College um, and received my bachelor's degree in mathematics and then um, after teaching for a bit I went on and got my master's degree in mathematics from Wesleyan University in Connecticut. Um, I've taught at both the high school and the college levels um, as well as I've coached um, equestrian sports of all um, different types. Um, from small children through adult amateurs, um, as well as coached at both the high school and the college levels. Um, presently, however, I'm not using any of that, <laughs> um, and I am I own and run a small um, commercial horse boarding and um, training facility, um, Birch Hill Farm, which we built um, in 2002, and I think that. Um, to be a school board member, getting a knowledge of education, or having a knowledge of education, and a knowledge of business, those are two very important aspects of being on the school board. Um, it is running a business, as John noted, um, and but you also have to have a feel for education and what it takes to educate kids in this day and age. Um, so it's, it's a balancing act. and. Um, I agree with Nakia that it does take a while to learn everything you need to know and, and you continue to learn everything you need to know um, to be an effective school board member. Um, this is, I am completing my 12th year over, not consecutive, but the 12th year of um, being on the school board in Granville. Um, I spread the 12 years out over the last 26 years, um, so it's been on and off. But that's given me a, a good perspective on different ways of being a school board member. Thank you. Dale. Hi. I'm Dale Buchero. I'm a transplant. I love my new home. I've been here since 2004. Uh, I graduated from Lakeland High School, which is in Westchester. I was very active in high school. I then went to uh, SUNY Albany and Mercy College. I have a bachelor's in psychology. I continued um, additional credits in Spanish at Pace University. Um, I've worked in a pre-Montessori uh, school. I have worked in a private Catholic high school. And I also worked in the law library at Pace University. Uh, I've been around education probably my whole life. I was minoring in it when I first started my major. Uh, I've worked at the Capital District Psychiatric Center as a volunteer. Uh, since I've been here, I've done a lot of volunteering, so I'm sure everybody knows who I am. Um, I've volunteered at the school. I volunteer at my church. I've worked PTA, book fairs, um, fundraisers. Uh, I've been a classroom chaperone. I have been your arts and education liaison since, I think, 2005. Uh, I've been on various committees. People have asked me to be on health and wellness. Um, let's see. Uh, 
the Pathways leadership team. Uh, currently, I'm on the, oh, what would you call us, the planning committee. I am a stakeholder on the Smart Schools Bond Act. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that I've done since I've been here. Um, but I'm around, I'm always willing to help, always willing to share ideas, uh, always willing to learn. So I would look forward to being on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Second like question, uh, and we start off with Nakia. Um, it's two parts. Uh, what motivated you to run for the school board, and what makes you uniquely qualified to serve on the school board? Nakia. Well, I originally um, wanted to run for the school board because I wanted to have a voice. I saw other people run for the school board, serve their communities, and honestly, I never heard any bad things happening. It looked fun. <laughs> I uh, didn't quite realize how much work was entailed, but um, it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. Um, the reason I, like I said, the reason I ran, I wanted a voice. I wanted to help represent the community for the parents who have children in this district that can't run, don't want to run, or whatever the case is. I just wanted to help. And um, like I said, I think it's one of the best things I've ever done. The second part was, and what makes you uniquely qualified to run for the school board? I mean, what makes me unique, I guess, is I'm not afraid to ask questions. If I don't know what's going on and I don't understand the situation, I have absolutely no problem saying, hey, can you explain that to me, or I don't really understand why we do that. And if the reason is, well, we've always done that, I'm your girl. I'm one that says, well, just because we've always done it doesn't mean that's the right way, and so on and so forth. I think it's okay to not go quid pro quo, quo on everything, policies, procedures, or whatever, you have to ask questions, you have to inform yourself, you have to educate yourself, because ultimately our goal is the kids and what's right for the kids, and we want our kids to benefit from the school district. And I think at that point, you know, you, you know that you're very passionate, and if you're asking these questions and you want to be educated, you're doing the right thing, you're running for the school board. Well, what motivated me to run for the school board is I really believe that the, the school needs to be the centerpiece for our community. And I think that for that to happen, we've got to get the kids involved and we've got to get involved. And that's where I, I wanted to kind of step up and, and, and try to make that happen. I think that the um, in any community, we need to have something that bonds us all together. And I think that that has got to be the school in this community. And I think that as a school board member, we help to shape that vision as we move forward. Um, what makes me uniquely qualified? I guess we all have our qualifications. Um, I tend to have a good relationship with the kids. I tend to hopefully have a better under or have a good understanding of what they're looking for and what what they want out of the school, and I hope to be able to give them a voice, and you know, give our community a voice to help make this school, you know, the, the proverbial shining city on the hill. Thank you, Audrey. The reasons I run from the school board have changed over the years. Originally, it was because I was an educator and wanted to be involved in education. Um, now. I still believe in that, but uh, Granville has been my home now for over 30 years, and um, now it's more about giving back to the community that I call my home. Um, I've raised three children um, that have gone through the system um, and have a fourth child still in the system, and through their eyes I've seen another side of what the school system is like, pros and cons things that we're doing well, things that I think that we could do better. Um, the reason I'm running again is that we've started some initiatives this year um, and over the, well, over the last three years that I would like to see through to fruition. Um, I would like to see um, creating a vision for the future of education in Granville and seeing how we can repurpose our buildings to bring that um, to a conclusion or bring it to a new and, what did you say, shining star on the hill? <laughs> um, and um, 
so as far as wanting to be on the school board, um, I like I like working with um, the teachers, the administrators, and um, other school board members to try to make this a wonderful place. As far as being uniquely qualified, I think I touched on it before that um, I have the educational background and the business background, as well as insight from my kids, and I care. Um, I care deeply about the, um, making the children in this town ready to function in the 21st century. Thanks. Yep. Hi. Um, okay, so why am I running? Um, years ago, uh, someone I knew here had told me that the schools, I was saying how wonderful it was, because when I was moving, I was paying so that my daughter went to a private school. And I had done my research on Granville and realized that we had a 14 to 1 uh, teacher-student ratio. And I thought, wow, it's just like private school, except it's included in my taxes. So I was saying how great it was, and the person said to me, well, you do realize we're in a CINE school, which was a school in need of improvement. And I'm so proud to say I did my homework before I came, and we are in good standing. So um, a lot has changed, and the boards that have been here previously have worked hard to do that. So my gut feeling way back then was, this is a jewel that no one knows about. You know, you have small classrooms, you have teacher involvement, you have community involvement. So I, I still want to join the board to do good things. Those of you who know me, I am my child's advocate, so now I would like to be everyone's child's advocate. Um, and the thing that's unique about me is I am currently a free agent. Um, I resigned my position in December as a bookkeeper and um, an administrative assistant at the church. So I have a lot of time now. So I'm, I'm in a good position to take this on and continue to do my homework and learn about the board. Thank you. Here. <coughs> the main reason for me running again is the kids. Um, I've always been involved with, like I said, youth sports. It's very important to me that they all get the opportunity um, like Audrey said, we've got some initiatives started, but over the nine years that I've been on the board, um, I've always been one for wanting stability. And I think we're finally getting to that point in the school where we've got some administrators and teachers, and we're getting a little more stability, which I think is the most important thing in the kid's life, okay? Lots of these kids, even in this small town, it's very guarded. Um, the teachers are the most important people to these kids. Um, Kids are very important to me, always have been very important to me. Um, like I said, my three kids are now grown, doing very well. Um, there are opportunities here for every kid to do well. Um, what makes me unique? Uh, we're all unique. Um, I've got nine years of experience. Um, I'm pretty dedicated to this. I don't miss meetings. Uh, I work for the largest employer in, in, the, in the village. Um, you know, we've suffered through the hard times. Financially is the biggest challenge that the school's got, will always have. And I think that I've got ideas there and we've and we've worked very well hard the last few years to put ourselves in very good financial standing. So I guess that's what makes me unique. Thank you, Eric. Our next question we'll start off with Ed. Um, Ed, from your perspective, what do you see as our school's greatest strengths? change it up on us, didn't you? <laughs> we have a lot of strengths. We have an excellent staff. We've got very good administrators. We have all the fundamental basis already in place from the previous boards to be an incredibly successful school district. We, we have our failures, we have our fallacies, but we have all the, the foundation blocks are here. Um, we have a board that's looking at the future. We have administrators that do a wonderful job bridging the gaps between some of our, our kids' issues and, and getting the help that they need. I've seen that firsthand with, with Mr. Poucher. Um, those are some great strengths that other schools, frankly, probably don't have. It's the, the tight-knit community that, that 
allows us to bridge some of those gaps, you know, between our, our fallacies and our successes. And um, when you when you start looking at how those successes can can play, it's it, again you have the foundation to, to build a much better system. And I think that's our greatest strength is, is our sense of community and our and our our sense of closeness as a small community. Thank you, Audrey. When um, I started having children in the school system, I was concerned um, about the course offerings and whether it would be challenging enough for some of my children. Um, I don't have that concern anymore. We offer a tremendous number of courses that meet the needs of um, every child from the most advanced, most um, motivated student down to a child that may not be motivated and may not have the advantages of support at home to children that um, have disabilities. We are able to accommodate children of all types and that is a huge um, advantage. I think another advantage that we have is that um, we are in finan financially in pretty good shape right now, um, which um, over the years has come and gone, but I know a lot of districts in the area are really struggling financially. And um, due to um, excellent financial management, um, our school is able to put forth a budget with a 0% increase um, and not lose any programs. And um, the programs that we offer and the opportunities we give the kids um, are what keep the kids wanting to come to school. Um, we certainly have a lot of work to do in that regard as well, but um, I have two of my sons have graduated from um, Granville, and they're both doing very well. They were ready to go out to college and into the workforce, um, and that's what it's all about, the kids and making them ready. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, I mentioned before the small class sizes. Uh, this is the kind of question I think that we just keep adding on top of each other. Um, there's varied offerings, the AP programs, the SUPA programs. Uh, we have pre-K, that's a strength. Um, we have caring staff that's there to identify and help if there's children in need. Uh, we're a leader in technology in the area. Uh, project Lead the Way, our whole technology wing, uh, the big capital project that was done in the mid-2000s. I, I don't see that in any other school in the area, and that's the kind of thing that I would like to continue to build on, that the 21st century, your phone is good this year, and in three months, you know, you need a new phone. So uh, the upgrades in technology and the things that are going to be changing rapidly I think we're on top or ahead of the curve. So I would say that's one of our, our biggest strengths. Very good, thank you. Uh, Eric? Um, I think our biggest strength is community. Um, you've ever had to raise money, people are more than willing to come and help. Um, like Dale was saying, we are financially sound as a district, but yet we still have the ability to have the technology department, the business department. We, we haven't gutted our school system. You know, our kids are still getting all the, all the opportunities that are necessary in order for them to go on. Um, I'm pretty proud of the, that fact that, you know, the technology is just amazing. Um, it, it, it gives opportunities to children that wouldn't have, okay? And a lot of kids have gone on to bigger and better things because of this, you know. I think that we always, you know, we always gotta be very prudent and concerned with spending money because we are a poor district, but we are rich in community and I think that's the most important part. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Struggling there, sorry. <laughs> um, what can I say? Um, 
It's going to sound pretty mundane at this point because I'm the last one to go on this question and everyone's already said such awesome things, but I'm just going to have to piggyback. Um, we live in a really great place. Um, the town and the village have changed so much from when I was a little girl to what it is today. And you can contribute that to so many different things and so many different people's hard work and dedication. Um, our sense of community is tight. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know a lot of other communities in Washington County that are as thick as we are. And I think that shows a lot. I think we live, or uh, we bleed blue and gold in this town. And I know for sure if any of you sitting there, and in, including any of us up here, if someone were to talk, you know, junk about Granville, then you better run because we're not having it. Um, and I think that's the overall concept that, you know, we try to say, you know, we're Granville proud and, and we do, we have so much to be proud of our town and it's beautiful, our village is beautiful and we do so many neat community activities now. Um, us, um, also with the Pember and the Slave Valley Museum and then we try to tie things in with the school. It's a really awesome network. Um, I will say we have a fantastic infrastructure in this school system. Our technology and business department, like Eric just mentioned, are head and shoulders above what anybody else has, and we should feel really proud of that. And I know our kids are, and our kids are very pleased that they have the opportunity to do those things where other schools don't. And Eric and everybody else is right. We're giving our kids an opportunity to do different things and succeed at different levels, and you really can't compare that to anybody else. Um, as far as, you know, we offer so many different things, athletics, extracurriculars, clubs, leisure activities. Um, we really cater to every student's needs in this town. And I really think that is something spectacular that we need to embrace. And like I said, we have the infrastructure and we're on the right path. And I think every year we should just be getting bigger and better, bigger and better, and just making those goals and moving forward. That was a pretty easy question. I'll make it a little harder. Hey, Audrey, you'll start off on this one. Thanks, John. <laughs> from, from your perspective, what do you see as the greatest weaknesses in our school system, and how would you address those? One of our weaknesses, um, and I'm not sure that it's a weakness in the system, but something that we need to work on, and that is student achievement. Um, and we have made gains in that area, but we have a ways to go, um, and we're working toward it. Um, student achievement and getting students ready for the future, um, I think the, another place where we need to work toward um, is a vision for education in Granville and how to use what we have um, to bring that vision to fruition. Um, we, you know, we struggle uh, with achievement because we have some students that do not have the support at home, um, and that's a struggle. Um, we struggle with achievement because some students are not motivated and don't want to stay in school. We need to work on keeping kids here. Um, I think if we create a vision and create a school that's the center of the community, where people want to be, where kids want to be, we will keep kids in school and we will be able to bring them along to graduate and be ready to either go into the workforce, the service, or college, or wherever it is that they may end up. Um, but um, student achievement is, is something we need to work on. Um, and not that we aren't, but we need to continue. Thanks. Um, I'm going to follow Audrey on that because um, my personal thing was um, students who drop out. Um, I find that even when it's just one, it's one too many. Um, we are a small community. We should be in the best possible position to help a student. We should be doing more to identify that before they drop out. And when they've dropped out, I think we should still be in touch with them to see if they're under 18, if they want to come back to school. Um, a lot of the students are under the impression that when they leave, they can get a job. But they don't know that if you're under 18, you can't operate a deli slicer, you can't work on a construction site. There's not many opportunities for you. 
and unfortunately sometimes they have to drop out in order to find out that that's true and then they don't want to come back. So that's my personal pet peeve and that would be anywhere. It's not unique to our school district. It's just something that happens that I would like to work on. Um, I also think that um, although we live in this great tight community, they're not here. And I would love to flash mob a meeting like this so that we had a ton of people in here who could you know, listen to us and ask questions. I think we need to appeal more to the community and make them feel more welcome so that we have bigger audiences and bigger gatherings. Thank you. Um, I think the most important thing is that our community has a, a very high rate of parents who didn't graduate from high school, which is a very alarming. Um, so there we have a grow, uh, our dropout rate is almost the same percentage. Over the years, working with Mark and other board members, we've made a concerted effort to keep class sizes in the elementary, you know, the pre-K, the K, as small as possible to try to catch kids up to the same level. This year, we've also added the ability to increase the pre-K in our budget, in case, because we had six kids left off last year. Um, I think you've got to get that literacy, and we've hired some really good, you know, new administrators and teachers that are, are very, you know, affluent in the idea of literacy. You've got to catch these children up that are disadvantaged to the other children that are there. Like I said before, really our good kids have no problems competing, okay? But if we can get these other kids to compete with them and get the same opportunities, we can move the other kids along even faster. When we first heard of the Common Core, it was like a nightmare. The state did a poor job. It's not that the Common Core is bad. It's amazing what these kids are doing when they're pushed, okay? And they can be pushed even harder. But we've got to catch up that other bunch. And I really think the, the, the things we're doing with the pre-K and the smaller grade, you know, smaller class sizes, like Dale said, are very important in the, in the lower levels to catch these kids up. Because, you know, if they're not reading by the third grade, they're in serious trouble. And this has been very important to me. And, you know, as many hours with Mark and how a passionate Mark can be, with, with the, the education, you know, at the elementary level. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, let me see. Just make sure I don't say what someone else has already said. I think I'll go with, I think a big problem that we're having in our district is with mental health and behavioral health issues. Um, it's not just Granville, it's all over the Capital District. Um, we see it in every school district. We are no different than anybody else. What is changing is our society. Our education is changing. Education is changing big time. And we are always in that game of catching up or keeping up with. Um, and I honestly think Granville does a fine job of that. I will say that I come from that side of I think we should be teaching the whole student. Um, is for me, I'm not a fan of standardized testing. I never have been. Um, that could be, I'm not a very good standardized test taker, and maybe that's why, but I don't think it's a true testament of someone's capabilities. I don't think it's a true testament of someone's intelligence. I think there's too much emphasis on uh, testing and keeping up with educational norms and pushing, pushing, pushing for numbers and averages and grades. It's important, don't get me wrong, and I know we need it as a measurement tool. But if you teach the whole student in a holistic approach, you're teaching much more. You're teaching mindfulness. You're teaching that child or those children to live in the now, to not worry about what happened to them in their past, and not to focus too far in the future. They focus on the now. They're in tune with their bodies. They're in tune with their school district, their community. And it's a holistic approach where that child is becoming one. So you're getting the grades and all the you know standardized test taking, but you're teaching them how to cope, how to manage under the stresses of life because guys, our kids are under so much stress these days, more so than I think any of us ever were. Our society has changed, education has changed, and we have to bring ourselves into the 21st century. And this is a very big movement that's happening right now. And I would love for us to uh, be able to instill that here in Granville.
I think those are all great answers, but I think it, my personal opinion is I think it comes down to getting the kids involved and getting them engaged. Every good salesman knows that the longer I can keep you in front of me, the better chance I have of selling your product. So we've got to keep the, we've got to give these kids a reason to come to school every day. We've got to give them a reason to get in front of these teachers, get in front of these administrators, get in front of these coaches, so that we can sell them the product of an education, whether it be the education of our society or be the education of the books that we're teaching or the classes they're taking. Um, how do we get these kids engaged? One idea is to have an honors room. Have a room with a, set, a standard that if you are involved in clubs and you maintain a certain grade point average, instead of going to study hall, you get to go to the honors room where you get more freedoms. Give these kids a carrot, give them a reason that they want to be here, they want to go on to the, you know, go to this room. Um, if you fall below the standard, you're out of the room. These are, there, there are ways of giving these kids positive reinforcement to bring them into the school that don't cost money if any money at all and I think those are the things we have to look to but the, the bottom line is that for these kids that are falling into the shadows these kids that are that are not being involved every day they're not involved it's another day we're losing them we're, and we're not we're not going to get them back and we've got to get them in these doors and keep them give them a reason to be in these doors thank you Ed. our next question will start off with Dale the role of the school board is to set policy strategic goals and the overall governance of the school. Sometimes school board members overstep those bounds and get involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the school. How would you prevent that from happening with you, and how would you address that issue if a fellow school board member was overstepping those bounds and trying to get involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the school? Yeah. This is a fun question. <laughs> um, I'm sure there are guidelines that exist as to how to handle this. Um, I guess it would be like any other management situation. You would actually have to speak to that person. As far as myself getting involved in that way, uh, again, if my kids have had problems with their teachers or their coaches, I say it's your problem. And I have made them go and speak to their teacher or their coach, and then beyond that, I will get involved. Um, because I don't want to be that parent. Uh, the, one of the reasons I've waited to this point in time to run for the board is that my youngest daughter is a junior. She'll be here one more year, but I plan on being here many more years. So I thought it was time for me to step in. As far as uh, disciplining someone, I believe there's a book, right? Oh, training and a book, <laughs> School <coughs> Policy. And I guess that's my summer reading if I'm fortunate enough to make it onto the board. And at that point, I would have guidance in how to assess a situation like that because at present, it's not the same as when I had a business and I could say you're fired. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we all sign an ethics code each each year. The 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 meeting in July. Um, I believe it's everybody's own ethics and how they, they, they present themselves and how they deal with the problems. Um, as I believe that, you know, I like Dale, my children are grown um, and I've never had an agenda. I never pushed my children and any time that a, a teacher needed, that I needed to speak to a teacher, I tried to do it very inconspicuously. Um, like Dale said, um, part of teaching your kids to grow up is dealing with their own problems and I think my three deal with their own problems well. Um, I never really got involved for them. Um, I do believe in getting involved for children um, and now that I do not have, um, I've had some pretty interesting conversations with teachers and administrators. You know, there, there's a fine line between being proactive, you know, and educating yourself. You know, we, we've got to be, you know, it's a hard job to sit up here. There's so much to learn and, you know, we're not experts at education. You know, we don't live in that world every day. These are the experts, most of the experts are sitting in the front row. Um, I love to, to, uh, to talk to people, get their ideas, and form, you know, use an educated, you know, decision process to make an ethical decision. Um, yeah, there, there's been times when, you know, 
Fellow board members have overstepped their bounds. Um, it's, a, it's a real fine line because most of them were parents, okay? You know, you, you wear two hats. I no longer have to wear that second hat, it, you know, but there are a lot that have to wear that hat, and it is a fine line, okay, because they are your children, and you're always going to want the best for them. But, you, you can. <laughs> Actually, Mark, we can hold out for the rest of the time. Okay, we'll go quick. I'm not okay. Yeah. Are you done? Are you done? You're done. You're done. Um, the biggest part for a school board member is very simple. You have to be ethical. You have to maintain professionalism. If you have issues with other board members, there are avenues that you can use to discuss your issues with board members, but if it's other staff, again, there are protocols in place for that as well. I am a mother and I have two children at two different schools and I have had issues um, come up. I have never and will never ever use my position on the school board in any inappropriate way. That's not how I roll. I do hold myself in very high esteem as far as my ethics and my standards. And I don't want to be a hypocrite. I would never want to say, um, I don't agree that so-and-so does that, and then I go and do it. Um, it's a small town, and people talk, and you have to maintain that professionalism. It's just the way it is. If you have issues, like I said, there's protocols, there's manuals, there's other things, there's other uh, steps in, involved to help uh, prevent that from happening. But, um, did I answer the question? You're, you're good with it. <laughs> okay. hey, thank you. Is it, yeah. it is a delicate balance. Um, my children aren't grown. So, I am going to be down to the school as a parent, my wife's going to be down to the school as a parent, and we want the best education for our child. That, that's a real situation. As far as a board member goes, you have to maintain that separation. It's, it's truly that simple. Um, how do I deal with a person that oversteps that bound? Well, anybody that knows me knows me, I'm really shy. And <laughs> I would probably have to find a way to get over that shyness to try to maybe address it with them straight I, that's So I, I guess conversation and try to lure them back over the line would be the best way to do it. <laughs> or get them with Dale's book. One of the two. Yeah, way to get the book. Get it yeah, exactly. some damage. The book will work. Thank you. Audrey. Thank you. Um, I think this is a tough one. Um, in order to not micromanage at all, it requires trust in the leadership. We have a great bunch of leaders. Um, there are times when the leadership will ask a board member, particularly the board president, um, where um, Eric and I have both been, um, to assist with a situation with a parent or something going on. Um, by some people's standards, that might be micromanaging by other people's standards, it's you're doing your job as a board member. Um, as far as dealing with having students, having your own children in the system, um, I my opinion is that you always have your board member hat on. You never take it off. Even if you're talking to a teacher about your child, you're still a board member in their eyes. So you, you cannot really function as just a parent and say, okay, I don't have my board member hat on right now. It's always on. Um, and that makes it difficult sometimes. There are times when I would have, if I wasn't a board member, I probably would have gone to see a teacher and said, would you consider this? What do you think about that? Um, and express my opinion. As a board member, I don't do that. Um, and um, I encourage if my children have, tr have had or do have tr um, troubles with a teacher or something going on in school, um, figure out what avenues that you can take um, to either speak with a teacher, or if you're not comfortable doing that, go to a guidance counselor, go to the principal, but chain of command. Um, and that's important uh, as a board member to remember there is a chain of command and to follow it. Um, if a teacher complains to you, the first thing you do is say, did you speak with your principal? Did you speak with your superintendent? And on it goes. Um, if a parent complains to you, same thing. Start with the teacher, then the principal, then the superintendent. 
and by the time it gets to the board, if it gets to the board, then we need to listen. Um, we are here to represent the community and represent everybody in the community. And um, if people come to speak with us, we need to listen and then channel what we've heard to the appropriate places. Thanks. Thank you. Next question will start with Eric and uh, maybe a devil's advocate here for a second. It's a hypothetical situation, kind of what I asked last year. Currently, I live in Seattle with my wife and two kids. <coughs> I was recently hired by St. Gabon to uh, come to Granville work. Right now, my wife and I, were looking around the area for a place to live. Uh, we obviously want to live close to work. We are researching, and one of the things we came up with, the Albany Business Review basically ranked the top 84 schools in the capital region. Good news is Granville jumped 11 spots between 2014 and 15. We went from 68 to 57. Bad news, my friends, is that the other schools that I'm looking at are Lake George, Greenwich, and Queensbury. They all ranked much higher than Graham. Lake George was 10, Greenwich was 11, Queensbury was 12. My question to you is, I want you to convince me why I should come to Graham, live in Graham, and send my two kids to the Graham Central School System. Eric, we'll start with you. Um, first and foremost is the community. Uh, it's a wonderful place and a safe place to raise your children. Um, my, uh, and I can use, speak from uh, experience, my three children survived and prospered here and are now doing very well at the next level. Um, they are getting great educations, um, very proud of them. Uh, we have one of the most wonderful technology departments in the area, bar none. Uh, we compete, you know, with the, the Saratogas and everybody going to nationals with our technology. Uh, our business department wins all kinds of awards. Uh, we have many great, great uh, extracurricular activities. Uh, our kids do wonders in, in music. There are great opportunities for the kids who want to work. And if your children want to work, this is a great place because it's very safe and people care. Thank you. Um, to piggyback off what Eric said, um, I would definitely sell the town. The town in, in and of itself, I had already mentioned it before, so I won't say it again, but it's a, it's a great place to live, um, centrally located to many different things, 30 minutes in every direction pretty much. Um, besides that, the school is a great place. We have educators that care generally about the children. Um, our kids are happy. They're involved in athletics, tons of extracurriculars, athletics. Um, great technology department, like Eric said, business. Um, I know our FFA is like off the charts, doing great things. Um, those are the kind of clubs and extracurriculars that we would want to, you know, say to people, yeah, you know, we um, maybe slid back, you know, a few years back and we're bouncing back though. We've climbed 11 spots and we're only going to go up from here and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to implement and that's when you would stick with your goals and, make, and take those steps. You know, we would have to sit as a board to make goals in the steps in between our goals to reach them. That's what I would share with whomever I was speaking to, the couple. Um, you know, we want a, instead of a 77% graduation rate, we want to improve it to 85 next year. I mean, I don't know if that's feasible, but that's something that we would want to raise. Um, that district, Albany District Review report um, actually factors in, I think, our graduation rate as well. So that's something that really should be the board's next main focus um, in addition to everything else that we said tonight. Our graduation rate isn't the highest, and there's reasons for that. So we have to get out there, we have to talk to our kids, we have to say, you know, what is it that you think you need? What could we be doing for you? Um, the kids know. They know what uh, what they respond to. They either buy in or they don't buy into what we're doing here. And if they buy in, we're going to be very successful, we're going to see great success, and we're going to reach those goals. But the steps in between, that's what the board does, and we have to work together with the educators, with the students, and make at one central body and uh, that's what I would tell the people that we're working on it we're a work in progress and we're going to get there Thank you. Hey. well I would tell them that we're a tight-knit community our cost of living is much lower than our neighbors we have an incredibly low crime rate we don't have a lot of the problems that some of those communities may be having 
We're an outstanding community. The school itself is financially solvent. We're getting better, and the best is yet to come. And you just keep selling all the progress that we're making. You know, your VEX program, your junior VEX program is doing outstanding, and the technology department is doing wonderful. We just have to push our highlights and not focus on our negatives. Thank you. Audrey. Um, ditto to everything everybody else said. Um, I agree, cost of living was one that I had as well. Um, we're close to Vermont, so it gives our students a chance to interact with students from another state. I don't believe that the other um, schools have, have that. Um, we are also financially sound, which means that we're going to be here. I don't know um, how those other schools are sitting right now, but we're going to be here, and um, if the governor has his way and consolidation happens, um, we're still going to be here. Uh, people will end up coming here. We won't end up having to go somewhere else. Um, I have uh, four children, the oldest of whom, um, for reasons that, that aren't really pertinent, um, decided to go to the Long Trail School for middle school and Burr Burton for um, high school. We offered that opportunity to our other three children. They all chose to stay here. So that says a lot right there for what kind of an education, <coughs> what kind of a community, and where kids want to be. Um, do we have work to do to keep all kids wanting to be here? Yes, we do. But we are making progress, we are improving, and um, as Ed said, the best is yet to come. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I was jotting things down. I wrote the student-teacher ratios, um, small classes, the advanced offerings. Um, as far as a sales pitch to another parent, I would say what I told my children when we moved here. Anything you do, I will know about in a few days. <laughs> and to another parent, that's a wonderful thing because it is such a tight-knit community. Um, and. As far as you know, us on the upswing, that's a good thing, because when you get too high, there's only one way to go. Uh, the other thing is that my children were wonderfully prepared here. Um, I told them that school is what you make of it, and Granville had a lot to offer. And my daughter is graduating in two weeks. Uh, honors, I just went to her honors thing tonight for uh, Phi Theta Kappa. Uh, she just got copy editor of the year. Uh, Granville prepared her wonderfully. Uh, kudos to the math department. She completed Calc 3, no problems. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say because the education she received and the other one is currently receiving has been great. So, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so my last question for tonight, and before I, I get to that, I do want to say one thing. Um, previous uh, forums we've had, I've always given the candidates the questions ahead of time so they knew what they were going to say to a T. And we kind of discussed this at the office about whether we should really do this and not give them the questions because that's, that's going to be very difficult for people to get up there out of the blue to think off the top of their heads about questions that sometimes can be very difficult. I would say they all did a terrific job. Mm -hmm. My last question is this. We're going to, in the key, you'll have it. Start off with three years from now, or nine years from now, or 12 years from now, when you retire from the school board, what would you have liked people to most remember about your service to the Granville School and the community? Good question. Well, let me see. I think what I would say, as far as some type of a legacy that I could leave behind, um, is that it's okay to look at adversity in the face and stick out and make unpopular decisions and it's okay uh, as long as you can lay your head and uh, sleep wake up the next morning knowing that you did the right thing for the right reasons it's okay you don't always have to be uh, quid pro quo you can be independent and uh, that's I I think that's what I would do I, I would want someone to know that it's okay to stick to your convictions and refuse to lower your standards. Um, we don't want that to happen. We want only the best for our kids. They deserve it. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, fair and open-minded. Um, we don't all have to agree, but what we do have to do is be able to go into a room, have an intelligent adult conversation, and try to come up with what is best for our kids. Um, you're not going to win them all. You know, hopefully you're not going to lose them all. But at the end of the day, I hope that uh, people look back and say everything he did, he was open-minded about it. He was, he gave it a well thought out uh, process and, at the, and he was fair. And if that is my legacy, I can live with that. Thank you. Audrey. Um, I would like people to remember that I was approachable and that I listened to whatever concerns they had, um, that I was open with my communication and the boards with whom I served had an open communication policy <coughs> with each other, with the administration, and with the community. Um, ditto to what um, Nakia said, um, it's important to stand up for what you believe in and not be afraid to vote how you feel regardless of whatever outside or inside pressures might exist. Um, and that I care about deeply about kids and about education and about this community. Thanks. Yeah. Um, that I was listening, uh, that I was creative as far as um, trying to solve problems and uh, come up with solutions, uh, that I was honest, that I was good when it came to working with other people, um, you know, sharing ideas, respectfully disagreeing, but overall, you know, always working to improve. Thank you. I can sum it up pretty fast um, that I cared and uh, I left this place a lot more stable than it was when I got on financially and through the administrators. Thank you very much. And I want, again, I want to thank the school board candidates. I also want to thank everybody who came here tonight. Uh, again, uh, Camille is going to generously videotape this, so we'll have it on the school website. It will be on the Sentinel's website. It will be on the Sentinel's Facebook page. And Camille, who knows, it may go viral. <laughs> Again, thank you very much, and uh, keep in mind that the budget and election vote is Tuesday, May 17th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Spread the word. Thank you.